Alrighty. Hello, campers. Let's, uh... Let's get back to this, huh? We are leaving the bank. Should we head to the city? Ooh, we are definitely gonna do this first, though. Nowhere. I just wanted to... Ah, but I can. Oh, let's go to the consort chambers from here. Nice. I don't actually know where I am, though. Oh, this must be the bridge that I just came across, and I went this way instead of this way. Got it. Yep. So instead of... I should have gone this way, and we would have had the entire consort chambers to look at yesterday. Or whenever that goes up, I can't say for sure. Hello. Welcome. I am Nalina. I don't recognize you as one of our expected clients today. I'm not. Would you like me to see when the consort will be able to meet with you? Can't I just go in? Mm, I'm afraid not. Yeah, you must understand there are many who seek the consort yeah. services. But if you wish to leave your name, she'll make every effort to meet with you. What do you do here, Nolina? I'm one of the consort's acolytes. Many of the people here today will not see the consort, but they expect to be at the two just the same. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It's our job to ensure that they leave contented. What exactly do you attend to? Oh, you know. Well, each acolyte has her unique abilities. Some soothe with song, others with conversation. As much as possible, we seek to match the needs of our clients to the skills of our acolytes. My specialty is touch. My fingertips can find every tension point in your body and relieve it. That does sound interesting, honestly. I'd like to try out your services. Excellent. I'll add you to our client list. We should be able to see you in... Mm, mm, three or four months. What is the consort? What does she do? Mm, it's difficult to explain. She's many things to many people, and something different for each. Some seek her for advice, some for entertainment, others still for pleasure. Most of the time, our clients won't realize what they were seeking until after she has provided it for them. Is she mystical? You make her sound like some kind of oracle. No, not in the usual sense. She's merely a woman. A woman with remarkable compassion and a generous spirit. I suggest you make an appointment and see for yourself. I already said I was going to. Didn't you put me in? I think I'm done here. Oh, well, I hope you'll return again in the future. We always enjoy seeing new clients. Cool, I'm just going to keep walking. Nalina. Yes, Shaira? Send the commander up to see me. I wish to speak with him. Yes, of course, mistress. Really must we with the... Dragging our fingers along the wall... Sexily, somehow? It appears the consort has taken no... She'd like to meet with you now. Sure. Where do I go? Just head upstairs. She'll be waiting for you. Okie dokie. Artichokey. Ha ha ha, because she looks like an artichoke. That's probably also racist. Welcome. It is a This is my first time. I can't believe I didn't come sooner. Um Okay. You're with the Alliance? My brother's a private back on Earth. Uh hope his last name's not Jenkins. I really, really do. Because otherwise I got some bad news for you. That's a weird ass bed. It's a very weird ass bed. That is close enough, Commander. I mean, I've heard a great many things about you since I got way closer. Okay. What exactly do you do? That depends on your needs. I offer advice to some, comfort to others. 
I have a certain problem that could use your expertise. Tell me all about it. Yeah, exactly. Maybe I can help. I have a friend, Septimus, a retired Turian general. I won't discuss the details, but he wanted me to be more than I could be. We had a falling out. Now he spends his days in Korra's den, drinking and spreading lies about me. If you would speak to him as a fellow soldier, I believe he will listen to you and let the matter be. What happened between you? I respect his privacy too mm -hmm. much to go into the details. If he wishes to tell you what happened, that is his prerogative. Okie dokie. What exactly do you want me to tell him? Appeal to a sense of honor. Remind him of his position as a general. What do I get out of this? If you can convince him to stop spreading lies about me, I would be very grateful. Was... Was that some, like... Creepy hug now I must ask thing. You to take your leave. I have many clients waiting to see me. I I feel dirty. Come on guys, let's get the hell out of here. I gotta go take a shower now. That was that was the weirdest hug. Oh boy. Exactly. That's just what I was thinking. Uh huh. Uh huh. Then we are ready to begin. How do you get that suit off? Also, can you even live on here without the suit? Because I don't need a suit. So obviously, we're breathing some sort of oxygen combination. Which then is another question. How do all of these races that don't need suits, how are they all breathing oxygen variation atmospheres? That's the real question. What's this about? Is that a Krogan? Welcome to Presidium Tourism Terminal 3. Here in the financial district, a number of businesses offer various goods and services to their exclusive clientele. The statue you see before you was commissioned to honor the Krogan soldiers who gave their lives to protect Citadel space during the Rachni Wars. So yes, it is a Krogan. In the aftermath of the Krogan rebellions, several embassies petitioned to have the statue removed. However, this motion was eventually quashed by the council. Interesting. Tell me more about the Krogan rebellions. In recognition of their efforts during the Rachni Wars, the Krogan were granted several new colony worlds. I guess I should have started there. Over the next 400 years, the Krogan species began to expand. Mm -hmm. Blessed with an extremely high birth rate, their numbers began to swell. Mm -hmm. Faced with a critical overpopulation crisis, the Krogan started a violent colonization of nearby worlds inhabited by other council species. The Krogan rebellions had begun. For a full century, the council and its member species fought to bring the Krogan under control. With the aid of the newly discovered Turian Empire, they were ultimately successful. You needed the Krogan to stop the Rachni, then you needed the Turians to stop the Krogan. So who's going to stop the Turians? I am Us. sorry, but that question is beyond my programming parameters. The Turians are members of the Citadel Council. They are not a threat to galactic peace. Until they are. Why did the Council fight so hard to keep the statue? Why not? The Krogan were instrumental in saving the galaxy exactly. from the Rachni threat. The Council believed this historical fact should not be forgotten. The Council also hoped that preserving the memorial would improve diplomatic relations with the Krogan and bring about a peaceful resolution to the rebellions. Unfortunately, the Krogan refused to negotiate and only surrendered after their population and homeworlds had been ravaged by the Turians. It does not serve them right. What were the Rachni Wars? Nearly 2,200 years ago, Jeez. explorers seeking to expand Citadel space opened up mass relays leading to systems controlled by the Rachni. A highly intelligent and aggressive insect race, 
the Rachni unleashed a war of conquest against the rest of the galaxy that lasted for nearly three centuries. Yeesh. The emergence of the Krogan finally turned the tide in favor of the Citadel species. Krogan forces provided the numbers necessary to halt the Rachni advance and drive them back. The Krogan then pursued their retreating fleets. Able to survive the harsh environments of the Rachni homeworlds, the Krogan hunted their enemy to extinction. Was it really necessary to wipe them out? I am sorry, but a value judgment of that nature goes beyond my programming. Yeah, she's just an AI. She doesn't know. That's Let's go. Now. Thank you for using Avina. Have a pleasant day. All right, moving on. Maybe we'll actually make it to the Citadel now. We're running. Yes, indeed, we're running. All over the place. We're running. Ooh, what's over there? Yep, to the financial district. We're not going there. What's that? To the Citadel Tower. Is this that bar I was at? No, this is to the wards. See, I don't need no elevator. Just walk. Oh, never mind. Come on. Man, that, there is a song stuck in my head and it refuses to leave. Alright, let's see. Where can I go? No, oh, I can just go to the Citadel Tower? Nah, let's walk. I'm sure there'll be other people to see and talk to. Oh, hey, AI. Look at that bug thing over there. What's it doing? Please do not disturb the keepers. Yeah. Welcome to Presidium Tourism Terminal 2. You are standing near the base of the Citadel Tower, one of the Presidium's most recognizable and important structures. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Behind me is the spectacular Relay Monument, a scale model representation of a Prothean mass relay. Mm -hmm. To your left is one of the keepers, the enigmatic caretakers of the Citadel, working on a control panel. You may see keepers involved in tasks throughout all levels of the Citadel. We ask that you do not interfere with them in any way. Mm -hmm. The keepers are essential to the smooth operation of the Citadel. Obstructing their daily work will result in harsh penalties, including incarceration and rehabilitation. Mm, what the heck kind of rehabilitation are we talking about here? Tell me about the Relay Monument. Discovered by the Asari who first arrived at the Citadel, the Relay Monument is one of the station's most interesting and controversial features. What is the meaning behind this striking piece of art? Is it a tribute to Prothean vanity? A reminder of their conquest of the galaxy through mass relay technology? Or perhaps it is a symbol of unity? A Prothean acknowledgement that the relays would eventually lead other species here to the Citadel. No one can say for sure, making the Relay Monument a favorite topic of discussion among academics and scholars. Uh-huh. Tell me about the Citadel Tower. Housing both the Council Chambers and Citadel Control, the tower is one of the most important buildings on the station. Access to these areas is restricted to those with the appropriate clearance. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. What happens in Citadel Control? Citadel Control handles all incoming and outbound transit. Every ship within 2,000 kilometers of the Citadel is under the jurisdiction of Citadel Control. At peak capacity, they are responsible for monitoring upwards of a thousand vessels.
do, 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 I'd like do, to hear more about the council do. chambers. The business of the council, which often has far-reaching effects on the galactic community, is conducted in a room at the Apex Citadel Tower. Mm -hmm. The council chambers themselves are truly a magnificent sight to behold, though few get to experience the view in person. Typically, only the councillors, ambassadors, and high-ranking officials, along with various support staff, are allowed access. No one else was in the room where it happened. The room where it happened. What if someone has business with the council? The average citizen must go through the proper channels if they wish an audience with the council. This is usually arranged through their respective ambassadors. Even then, few are given access to the actual council chambers. In most cases, the ambassador acts on behalf of the citizen. I'm scheduled to have an audience with the council. Only a handful of visitors to the Citadel are ever granted that privilege. I would be jealous, but that is outside the scope of my programming. What if someone has business with the council? The average citizen must go through the proper channels if they wish an audience with the council. This is usually arranged through their respective ambassadors. Even then, few are given access to the actual council chambers. In most cases, the ambassador acts on behalf of the citizen. I feel like we just like heard that. About the keepers. I think I missed that we... ...peaceful servants of the citizen, mm -hmm. though they are essential to the operation and maintenance of the entire station. Citadel regulations protect the keepers against interference during the performance of their tasks. Failure to comply will result in harsh penalties. Mm -hmm. Keepers can be seen in all sections of the Citadel, but are typically found in and around the tower. Yeah, why? Any particular reason? I'm so suspicious. The keepers do not communicate with other species. It is assumed, however, that the tower houses the Citadel's primary control systems. Many of the station systems, such as navigation and life support, function automatically. It is believed the Keepers operate systems from inside the tower's inaccessible core. The Keepers also make frequent appearances in the Council Chamber itself, though they appear to be just passing through on their way to some other destination. Okay. Gotta go. I'm gonna That's go meet the Council, now. finally. Thank Maybe. Thank you for using Avena. Have a pleasant day. I won't. Human. Fascinating. Now, art doesn't normally do much for me, but that relay statue, I like. I'll bet you do. Oh, this is how we get up to the council chamber. Is that really? It's just like a little tower? It's weird. All right, here we go to the Citadel Tower. We're doing it. We're finally here. It's only taken 23 episodes. The council isn't going to ask me any questions, are they? I doubt it. We've made our reports. Now we just have to trust Ambassador Odina. No, we don't, sir. I'm with her. This is an interesting, interesting elevator music. First off, second off, this background reminds me of an old. Uh, screen flickering when they showed movies. Hey, we did it. We did it. We rode an elevator. Now there's even more people to talk to, I'm sure. Hi, guys. Hey, it's Garrus, my buddy. Give me more time. Stall them. Stall the council? Don't be ridiculous. Your investigation is over, Garrus. Commander Shepard, Garrus Vicarian. I was the officer in the investigation into Saren. Sounds like you really want to bring him down. I don't trust him. Something about him rubs me the wrong way. But he's a specter. Everything he touches is classified. I can't find any hard evidence. I think the council's ready for us, Commander. Good luck, Shepard. Maybe they'll listen to you. Probably not. You don't want to keep the council waiting. I mean, 
They've been waiting this whole time, honestly. I've kind of been avoiding them. I've been running around talking to everybody else, actually. Out of my way. Hello, human. Who are you in your fancy outfit? Obviously nobody special. I can't even talk to you. This door doesn't open. I don't want to talk to Ashley. I'm sure that door doesn't open either. That door also doesn't look like it opens. There's some people talking. Nope. Oh, hey, there's a rear admiral. No, I'm waiting to speak with one of the council's assistants. Hey, I'll come handle that. Rear admiral. No, commander. That, you're just gonna say commander at me, commander. Okie dokie. Just say commander at me then, little jerk. What are you? What are you doing, just sitting around? I don't like it. Nowhere. I just gotta make sure. I don't remember if these unlock as you get places or if you have to unlock them. But I'm not gonna take any chances. Hello. Man, it's really, it's honestly, the, the updated graphics are amazing. Alright, here we go, council time. Time to get yelled at. Hey, Cap. The hearing's already started, come on. I mean, it's been a while. We've taken a long time. The Geth attack is a matter of some concern. But there's nothing to indicate Saren was involved in any way. The investigation by Citadel Security turned up no evidence to support your charge of treason. An eyewitness saw him kill Nihilus in cold blood. We've read the Eden Prime reports, Ambassador. The testimony of one traumatized dock worker is hardly compelling proof. I resent these accusations. Nihilus was a fellow Spectre and a friend. That just let you catch him off guard. Captain Anderson, you always seem to be involved when humanity makes false charges against me. And this must be your protege, Commander Shepard. Oh, I'm gonna get, get you. I'm gonna get you so hard. You're gonna die, and I'm gonna be the one to kill you. I don't know which one to say. Let's do this one. The mission to Eden Prime was top secret. The only way you could know about the beacon was if you were there. With Nihilus gone, his files passed on to me. I read the Eden Prime report. I was unimpressed. But what can you expect from a human? Saren despises humanity. That's why he attacked Eden Prime. Your species needs to learn its place, Shepard. You're not ready to join the Council. You're not even ready to join the Spectres. Yeah, what do you know? There's no right to say that. That's not his decision. Shepard's admission into the Spectres is not the purpose of this meeting. This meeting has no purpose. The humans are wasting your time, Counselor. And mine. You can't hide behind the Council forever. He, there is still he, one outstanding <clears throat> issue. Commander Shepard's vision. It may have been triggered by the Beacon. Are we allowing dreams into evidence? Now? I thought I told you not to How say can that. I defend my innocence against this kind of testimony. I agree. Our judgment must be based on facts and evidence, not wild imaginings and reckless speculation. Do you have anything else to add, Commander Shepard? You've made your decision. I won't waste my breath. The Council has found no evidence of any connection between Saren and the Geth. Ambassador, your petition to have him disbarred from the Spectres is denied. I'm glad to see justice was served. Oh, I'm gonna stab you in the face. I'm gonna stab you in the face and I'm gonna love it.
Well, I'll probably mostly be shooting you in the face. Bringing you into that hearing, Captain. You and Saren have too much history. It made the Council question our motives. I know Saren. He's working with the Geth for one reason. To exterminate the entire human race. Every colony we have is at risk. Every world we control is in danger. Even Earth isn't safe. Tell me about this history between you and Sarah. Yeah, I need to know everything. I'm Shepard. I'll bet they did. We shouldn't talk about this here. But I know what he's like. And he has to be stopped. What's our next step? As a Spectre, he's virtually untouchable. We need to find some way to expose I will. What about Garrus, that CSEC investigator? We saw him arguing with the executor. That's right. He was asking for more time to finish his report. Seems like he was close to finding something on Saren. Let's do it. Any idea where we could find him? Garrus is awesome. I have a contact in CSEC who can help us track Garrus down. His name is Harkin. Forget it. They suspended Harkin last month, drinking on the job. I won't waste my time with that loser. You won't have to. I don't want the Council using your past history with Saren as an excuse to ignore anything we turn up. Shepard will handle this. You can't just cut Captain Anderson out of this investigation. I mean... The Ambassador's right. I need to step aside. It's part of his job. I need to take care of some business. Captain, meet me in my office later. Harkin's probably getting drunk at Cora's Den. It's a dingy little club in the lower section of the wards. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe there's another way to find evidence against Saren. You should talk to Barla Vaughn over in the financial district. Rumor has it he's an agent for the Shadow Broker. The Shadow Broker? An information dealer. Buys and sells secrets to the highest bidder. I've heard Barla Vaughn's one of the top representatives. He might know something about Saren. But his information won't come cheap. Oh, brother. You and Saren have a history. What happened? About 20 years ago. I was part of a mission in the Skillian Verge. Mm -hmm. I was working with Saren to find and remove a known terrorist threat. Saren eliminated his target. But a lot of people died along the way. Innocent people. And the official records just covered it all up. But I saw how he operates. No conscience. No hesitation. He'd kill a thousand innocent civilians to end a war without a second thought. Killing innocents doesn't end wars. It causes them. I know how the world works, Commander. Sometimes you're forced to make unpleasant decisions. But only if there's no other way. Saren doesn't even look for another option. He's twisted, broken. He likes the violence, the killing. And he knows how to cover his tracks. Yeah, well, we heard that he's a monster, so... Man, this is a lot of... Alright, come on, Anderson. Probably for the rest of the episode. Buying and selling information is a part of the game. And the Shadow Broker just happens to be the best player on the field. Always sells to the highest bidder. Doesn't get involved in politics. Doesn't pick sides. A simple system, but it works. He's not a threat to anyone. Not directly. He's just a resource we can use. Or she is. Or maybe they are. Nobody really knows. Uh, I know. Our ambassador doesn't seem to get along with the council. He's just We need a new one. The council's always preaching that we need to be part of the galactic community. But for them, it's a one-way street. They want us to expand and settle unstable regions like the Skillian Verge and the Attican Traverse. But when we run into trouble, they don't want to help us. Everyone knows it's only a matter of time until we get a seat on the council. The Ambassador just thinks it should happen sooner rather than later. And I agree. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. We are kind of independent. Maybe they'd let us join the Council if we were more willing to cooperate with the other species. Of course they would. If we did everything they told us to, they'd love to have us on the Council. 
but it wouldn't be much of a deal for us. I understand their side. They don't want us dominating the Council. It's founded on cooperation and alliances. But we have to look out for our own interests, too. You don't think much of Harkin. I joined CSEC about 20 years ago. He's been an embarrassment to our species ever since. Oh, he's human. Roughing up suspects in custody, bribery accusations, alcohol and drug use. The embassy used to step in when he got in trouble. But I guess enough was enough. The guy's a scumbag. He should have been cut loose a long time ago. He was one of the first human CSEC officers. Guess it would have looked bad if he got fired. A lot of backroom deals were worked out over the years to keep him on the force. Politics is a dirty business sometimes. But it looks like his time's run out. We've got enough humans in CSEC now to stop protecting him. Spectres. I want to know more about the Spectres. They're not your typical government agency. They tend to work alone, behind the scenes. They take care of problems the Council can't. It's not easy preserving peace across an entire galaxy. The Council prefers to use diplomacy and negotiation. But sometimes more extreme measures are needed. Uh-huh. Oh my god, so many questions! How do they decide who becomes a Spectre? You can't just it's like I said, we're gonna talk to this guy for the rest of the episode. There's no training program. Spectres aren't made. They're born. The Council's They're always born. looking for exceptional individuals. People who can get the job done, like you. They've been watching you for years. They see something in you. They want you on their side. Nihilus was supposed to give them a final recommendation. But with him gone, things are still up in the air. Mm -hmm. What's their command structure like? There is no command structure. Each Spectre answers directly to the Council. Sometimes they're sent on specific missions. Other times... They act on their own. They tend to operate outside the law, do whatever it takes to accomplish their goals. The Council just turns a blind eye. Spectres have a lot of power, Shepard. They sound like shadow operatives. Everything about them is classified. We don't even know how many there are. The latest Alliance estimate puts their numbers under a hundred. But the Council couldn't do its job without them. They're the Citadel's top agents, the last line of defense, the final option before open war. The entire open galaxy war. respects and fears them. If a Spectre shows up, you know something big is about to happen. No one else was in the room when it what happened. happens when a Spectre goes rogue, like Saren. It doesn't happen often. The Council is careful when they select their candidates. But when something does go wrong, there's usually only one solution. Send another Spectre to bring the rogue agent down. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Who else we gotta talk to? Ah, there Tell we go. me about Barla Vaughn. He specializes in moving large sums of money without leaving a paper trail. A financial genius doesn't do anything illegal, but he knows all the loopholes. He's got an impressive client list. Ambassadors, diplomats, specters. That's probably why the Shadow Broker uses him. Uh huh. All right, that's it. I hey, go. look, it didn't take the rest Good of the luck, episode. Though. Hooray! I'll, the ambassador's office if you need anything else. I'll bet you will. All righty. Was a codex and twelve more XP. Let's see, let's check out the journal real quick. Did that. Uh, expose Saren. Well, can't do that yet. Find Saris? No. Garrus. My bad. CSEC officer. The Shadow Broker. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Once I figure out how to get us there. Let's start. Let's go back to the bank and we'll talk to the shadow broker. Well, we'll talk to his man here. 
I clicked the wrong button. Neat. Financial district. Yeah, fast travel. That's what I like. That's what I like. Okay. He's right in here. We're going to save. Before we do crazy stuff, I'm going to end up with like 300 saves, but that's okay. Is there anything I can do for you today, Commander? Mm-hmm. I've heard you work for the Shadow. Do you have any information about Sarah? You're very blunt, Shepard. But you're right. I am an agent for the Shadow Broker. And I do know something about Sarah. Well... I hear your information can be expensive. Normally, this information would cost a small fortune, but these are exceptional circumstances, so I am going to give it to you for free. What's the catch? There is no catch. The Shadow Broker is quite upset with Saren right now. They used to do a lot of business until Saren turned on him. That's what happens when you deal with a traitor like Saren. No matter what you think of Saren, he's not stupid. He mm. knows the Shadow Broker is a valuable ally. Turning on him doesn't make sense. Not unless something huge was at stake. I don't know the details, but the Shadow Broker hired a freelancer to deal with it. A Krogan mercenary. Uh-huh. That's not much to go on. That's really not. I just told you that the most famous specter in the galaxy betrayed the Shadow Broker. Quite a bargain, considering the price. Yeah, it is a pretty good bargain, honestly. Speak with the Krogan if you want to learn more. I heard he was paying a visit to Citadel Security. If you hurry, you might catch him before he leaves the Academy. Okay. Isn't it strange that a Krogan would want to speak with CSEC? Very. However, I doubt the visit was entirely his choice. You'll need to speak with him if you want to know more. You got anything else to tell me? Tell me more about the Shadow Broker. Most people think I deal in finances. But my real currency is knowledge. I trade information, and it has made me very wealthy. But the Shadow Broker is the true master. Every day he buys and sells secrets that could topple governments, always giving them to the highest bidder. Yet somehow he never seems to upset the natural balance of power. All those secrets being passed around seem to even out. Nobody ends up with an advantage in the end. Mm -hmm. Any guess what his identity might be? I don't know. Nobody does. The Shadow Broker could be any race, any gender. I have a theory that it's actually an entire group working under one identity. How else could they juggle so many contacts at the same time? How else could they keep all that information from getting crossed? But they've got the perfect setup. Every government is forced to play their game so they don't get behind. But no matter how long you play, no matter how many secrets you buy, you can never win. Never win. I thought you'd know more about the man you work for. From time to time I come across information I sell to the Shadow Broker. That's my only involvement. I like it that way. The more you know, the more dangerous the game becomes. I don't like danger, Commander. I'll leave that to you. Anything else to talk about? Nope, goodbye. You should go. Goodbye, Commander. Yeah, more XP. Have we leveled up again? No. Do I want to run to C-Sec Academy when I could just take 
The rapid transit. Presidium. Uh, let's do the embassies. That's close to CSEC. Where is the Krogan? No, wait a minute. CSEC Academies, right? Let's check the journal. Uh, you're not gonna you're not gonna tell me where he is. It's kind of rude. Yeah, he's not here. He's at downstairs in the wards. But I'll go check just to be safe. Krogan? No Krogan. How about in here talking to him? Nope, no Krogan. In the bar? No Krogan. Okay, didn't think so. Just running into the door. Alright. So... CSEC Academy, that's where I need to go. Let's go. Go talk to our Krogan friend. Recruit Garrus. In light of the recent attack on Eden Prime, many colonial investors are pulling their support for future projects. Rude. Proponents of expanded human colonization insist that Eden Prime was an case. Nevertheless, colonist enrollment has dropped sharply. Many colonial proposals are on hold until backers have some reassurance that human colonies will be adequately protected. Mm-hmm. Like I said, rude. Garrus, are you here? Can I take care of two birds, one stone? Where's this elevator go? Ah, to the docking bay. Not interested. Rex! Witnesses saw you making threats in Fist's bar. Stay away from him. I don't take orders from you. This is your only warning, Rex. You should warn Fist. I will kill him. You want me to arrest you? I want you to try. Go on. Get out of here. Yes, human. I'm trying to bring down Saren. Barlavon said to talk to you. Mm hmm Barlavon is a wise man. We may share a common goal, human. Enlighten me. I've been hired to kill the owner of Korra's den, a man named Fist. He did something very foolish. What did he do? He betrayed the Shadow Broker. A Quarian showed up here on the Citadel. She was on the run. She wanted to trade information for a safe place to hide, so she went to Fist. Man, we're gonna just pick up all our friends. He promised to arrange a meeting between her and the Shadow Broker. Instead, he contacted Saren. What does Saren have to do with this? Well, the Corian has something that connects Saren to the Geth. He paid Fist a small fortune for her. If we get our hands on that evidence, we can prove that Saren's a traitor. The Council will have to listen to us. Damn straight, Karth. Saren might already have her. Last I heard, Fist still had her. Probably somewhere inside his club. You help me kill Fist, she's all yours. I want to know more about your employer. Can't tell you much. All I got was a coded message with the details of the job. Standard procedure. What about Garrus, that Turian? He wants to take Saren down too. He might come in handy. He was here just before you showed up. 
Said he was going to follow up a lead on his investigation. Wanted to speak to the doctor at the med clinic. Move out. Ah, we can put him in. Goodbye. Actually, not goodbye. Goodbye, Ashley. No offense. Uh, yeah, no, I need him because he's got all the techie nonsense, so. I can't choose all three of you, can I? No. Hey, look. There's the Corian we're going to find. There's Garrus. There's somebody that I can't remember her name, but that's okay. And we're going to hit accept. And that's it for today's fun-filled talking episode of Let's Play Mass Effect Legendary Edition Mass Effect. Effect of the mass. I don't know. Alrighty. Thank you all for watching. Come back next time.